thanks for joining us here at the lakes. I'm Pastor Amy. I'm Pastor Dean. Uh, so we're continuing our series, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Pastor Amy, on on women in ministry, and this is number I don't even know anymore, but uh, whatever. I hope you listened to the uh, previous. Uh, if this video intrigues you, please listen to the previous videos. I think they're quite good. If I don't say so myself, yeah. right? Yeah. So I grew up in the church, and from a very early age, I. I felt the call of God in my life to be in ministry and to serve Him in that capacity. But there were no women in leadership in any of the churches that I attended. And so I made the assumption that that was that being a pastor or being a female leader in the church was not something that was open to me. And so I really struggled to know how to f follow the call of God in my life and in what capacity and in what environment. And so thankfully I still pursued that and God brought me to where he wanted me to be regardless, but it was a struggle for me. And I think that part of the reason is because verses like Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27 were not necessarily taught or um, applied in the way that perhaps Paul intended them to be. Yeah. And I can't find the verses right now. I'm like lost. <laughs> It's all right. So in Galatians 3, 26, it's uh, I'm glad you're here, Amy. Thanks. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have, been clo have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is, nor is there male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Yes. I think when we, we hear Paul's, you know, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Hey. We, if if we if we are a student of, uh, of scripture, if we've read scripture and heard enough, we know that uh, Gentiles uh, are are just as much a part of the church as those of Jewish heritage. That that there is no difference, and we're like, yeah, we get that. That's totally right. And we it's they're equal. Yeah, they're yes. equal. Yeah. That's how we think of it. And the slave with same with slave and free. That they're equal, and uh, and the same though we don't always make this application with male and female. We want to say, yeah, but right. uh, they, they, they are not to have the same roles or uh, equal authority within the church. Now, we've addressed that in previous videos, that issue of authority and command, but um, I just think this text in particular needs to be lifted up. I believe this is a direct, this is not, does not come from from Paul's um, education prior to Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on his life. I believe this is a direct result, of course, as he says, this is from the result of Christ. And, and I believe the Holy Spirit and, and a Pentecost experience that he has, that he knows that uh, male and females are actually equal and that because the Holy Spirit has been poured out equally upon male and females. It's one of those texts that we should give precedence to because it shows us God's ideal. It's our calling as the church to live into texts like these. Um, growing up, I would have heard things like, you know, male and female are equal, but we have different roles. And in texts like this, doesn't they don't mention anything about roles. They're, no. There's no clear guideline from Jesus as to what our roles ought to be or from any of the early apostles. So uh, then I might ask, well, how would I know what to do? If I don't have roles, how would I, uh, you know, defined roles, how would I know what to do? Right. So we see uh, Paul talk in Ephesians chapter 4 about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we are the church and we came out of Pentecost. Yeah. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what makes level ground. It's an equal playing field, equal yeah. opportunity for male and female, Jew and Gentile, slave and free. Pentecost churches um, 
hold male and females as equal? Right. Or they miss the one of the main points, one of the main points of Pentecost. So in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, we see Paul saying that God, Jesus has given different gifts to different people. And to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Uh, so Christ gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. I think some people read those texts as God gave uh, the gift of, say, a uh, prophet to some men, yeah. or, and to some men he gave the gift of apostleship, and to some men, the text doesn't say that. Right. And we know that that's not what, what uh, Paul means there, again, because of Pentecost, and because of what he says, say, in Galatians chapter 3. So we encourage you to follow your call yeah. to exercise the gift that God has given you, to live into what the Holy Spirit has gifted you, and to follow His, to follow God's lead in your life. God has a call for you. Thanks for joining us here at the Lakes. Tune in for more.